here's my very basic router mortise jig as you can see it's basically got three parts a base plywood an upright part and a horizontal part the only moving part in the jig is obviously the router itself and it moves along this axis and these stops prevent it from cutting a mortise larger than what you want now this part of the construction is very simple all it is is a steel rod and I'll show you from the other side you can see the groove that I've cut into the plywood there and into that groove I've simply put in a piece of metal in fact it's a, it's a hollow piece and onto that I have screwed two wing nuts which then allow us to have this router base plate mounted onto this metal rail and that's what allows us to move the router back and forward. On the front part of the jig there's a number of holes simply to allow for clamps to be put through so you can clamp your workpiece under there and this one here is just a vertical stop so when the workpiece is put in from this side and it's clamped in place you've got a stop that stop allows us to reference the mortises for future cuts so that's the basic construction what I'm going to show you is an example now of how I actually use this jig in operation the first thing I like to do even though some people don't necessarily do this is to actually mark out the mortise so in this case you can see what I've done here is actually marked out the exact mortise in this case on the piece where the end grain mortise is going to be made over here I've also made the matching mortise on the uh, face grain side of this particular construction so I find that this is quite useful because this allows us to set up the jig once and that allows us to keep the the same measurements for all our mortises remember what we're aiming for at the end is something that looks a little bit like this with a matching mortise in another piece which then simply clicks into place So the first thing I do is I actually clamp the, the piece that's going to be cut. So the piece to the right there is the one in which the mortise is going to be made. This is just the stop block that we're going to use as a guide for multiple cuts. And hopefully you can see here the mark mortise has been marked. And so using this marking on the mortise that we've actually made, what I tend to do is to set up the router. So the actual router base plate can be moved forward in that direction or back in that direction depending on where we want to make this mortise and we set up the two stops based on the markings that we've got on the mortise once you've done that it's just a question of actually making the mortise of course you want to make sure that you use the depth gauge on your router to make sure that you get the correct depth of the mortise that you're after The second stage is to actually clamp on the um, style in this particular construction because we're doing a rail and style mortise. So here is the uh, style. The rail was the one that we clamped on vertically. So again, we've got the stop block and we're using that as a reference point to actually clamp on our main piece. And again, if we go in and have a look up close here, you will see the marking on the mortise and there's the router bit there which is going to go in plunge through and make that cut again remember we've got our stop clamps which is what prevents the router from going too far in terms of the mortise and that gives us a perfect mortise length each time that we actually make a cut
So once we've actually gone through and made that particular mortise, this is what it should look like. Okay, now it's time for us to make the assembly. So the final part of this is obviously putting the um, joints that we've just cut together. So here we have the um, style part and here's the rail part. And here's the loose tenon that I've cut. The loose tenon is made from the same stock as the original wood. And the thickness of this is exactly the thickness of the router bit that you've used. So if you've used a quarter inch router bit, you would obviously make sure that this tenon shock tenon stock is actually quarter inch thick. In my case it's three eighths inch thick, so this this um, stock here is nine and a half millimeters, three and a quarter uh, inches thick. Uh, round the corners off because we've got rounded corners on our actual mortises. So slip that into the into the mortise, should be reasonably good to squeeze. In goes the other piece and there you've got it, a nice clean looking joint and that's going to hold for a very long time if you glue it up with just enough space for the mortise and just enough space for the glue. Hope you've enjoyed this short video on how to make loose tenons using my very simple jig. Thanks for watching.